Welcome to Winning with Anna Lee. I'm your host, Anna Lee Leonard, president and founder of Mainstay Financial Group, right on the corner of Cervantes and Perry. <clears throat> We're always there to serve you, to help you. Uh, our job is to help you stay on course, doggone, in your retirement planning, because that's a very difficult thing to do. People think they know all about retirement till you get there. And one of the things we found out in all these years, shown working with people is retirement is not for sissies. Yeah. You, you got to know what you're doing. You got to plan it. You got to have a good team to work with you. I want to welcome my guest today, Dr. Joan Connell. Um, and what we're going to do is pick up where we left off last month talking about IRAs. But a couple of very important things we want to talk about before we get into our discussion. Joan, you want to pick up a couple of things? Right. Well, I want to share with our, our uh, viewers that on July 20th, mm -hmm. Friday, July 20th, from 6 to 8 p.m. in the Education Center, we are having... At Mainstay. At, at Mainstay, in the Education mm -hmm. Center at Mainstay. We're having a guest come. Her name is Fran Clark, and she will be conducting a sound bath meditation. Yes. in order to help us learn how to control control stress. Yes. Especially thinking about retirement, right? Mm -hmm. you know? And then on Saturday, she's coming back that afternoon from 1 yes. to 5 p.m. to do an introduction to sound healing. And any of you who came to our E3 event in 2017, you heard Fran Clark during her presentation with her gongs and bells and yes. all those. The I, I want to I want to go into that a little bit. Um, Fran and I actually graduated high school together. We we went to school from first grade through high school, and I'm not going to tell you how many years that's been. Um, but suffice it to say, it's been more than three or four. But Fran was always into music. She actually used to play the organ uh, at, for the choir. At, at church and has always been very in tune to the power of sound and music and, and what it can do inside of the being. Fran has now gone to all kind of additional training, mm -hmm. actually has spent time in Portugal um, with, with people with who are considered masters Master teachers. of mm -hmm. the art of using sound as, as a methodology that we've lost over the years. Used to be used very, very much in ancient teachings and we got away from it like we have many things. So I think if, if nothing else, you owe it to yourself to come to this and just give yourself a couple of hours where you just, I know, immerse, immerse, immerse yourself, yourself in this beauty because the sounds that she produces are just, they're beautiful, mm -hmm. they're beautiful. They really are, yeah. so uh, yes, and there's a slight cost, so mm -hmm. if you have questions, please, or are interested in it, please call the office at 437-3127 and we will give you the information you need to register and you'll know the cost and so on. So uh, right. I, I think it's something not to be missed. Oh, I, th I think anybody who comes will thoroughly enjoy it. Uh, bring someone that, that you know needs some de-stress time. I think that's 99.9% .9 of us. Um, but I, I think you really, really enjoy that. Now here's the other thing that's going on we want you to know about. There are phone calls going around. Uh, you know, you're, you're getting that new Medicare card and Joan, you know, uh, your card got messed up, so we've got to get some of your personal information to make sure we get it right. Or, um, Joan, you know, we want to send you your Medicare card. You have to send us money. <laughs> What's right. this all about? Well, you know, it, and it's just amazing how the reason we're getting new Medicare cards is to cut down on fraud. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> because they're taking our Social Security number off of our Medicare cards. So now we're getting a different number that will be unique to each person. Yes. But th the bottom line is the fraudsters and the scammers, they're going to figure out what to do with this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So the first thing they're doing now, as Annalise says, they're calling people saying, oh, yeah, give us money because you're going to get your card and we need this information. Here's what you can do. First of all, if you get calls like that, see if you can find well, it probably doesn't help to know the number they're calling I, from. I would say get a phone number, call us, and let us report it to senior fraud. There we go. Because yeah. they probably have what's called a boiler room going on, and if we get enough of those numbers, they can shut those boiler rooms down. Oh, that's now, great. they basically will move someplace else, but at least we've deterred them. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. You know? The other thing is uh, Medicare says if you start getting calls like that, please do call 
1-800-MEDICARE. Yes. Medicare wants to know if you're getting calls like this. But now, basically, what can we do to help with this transition? First thing is make sure that your mailing address is up to date because they're yes. going to mail the card to you. So therefore, you know, you need to get the mm -hmm. right address, mm -hmm. right? The other thing is, uh, as Annalise said, be aware of the scammers. And then the third thing is the time frame that this is going to take place is between the April of this year to April of next year. Yeah. So if your spouse gets a card one day and you don't get a card, don't, don't worry panic. too much about it because yeah. there's a system to how they're doing this. Right now they're mailing up in the middle uh, middle Atlantic states and in California yeah, area. And, and if you're making a change to your social security, uh, claiming benefits, changing benefits, you'll probably get your card. Yes. If you're just claiming, you'll get the new card. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but other people, like you said, they're going kind of by sections of the country mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. alphabetically. They, they've got some kind of system worked yeah. out. Who knows? But if we get close to next April and you haven't gotten your card, then call Medicare and say, excuse mm -hmm. me, I haven't gotten mm -hmm. my card yet. Yeah. And just one final thing, Annalie, if, if people want to go online to Medicare.gov, mm -hmm. there's a little map, that a little link you can click onto the map, and it will show what states they're currently mailing to. Oh, good. To. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. I didn't know that. Good. You see? So you've got all those good things going on. Um, come out, join us with Fran Clark in the sound bath. You'll enjoy that, and be careful with the Medicare scammers. There you go. And where we want to go now is we want to con continue where we left off last month because we were talking about IRAs, and IRAs are a big thing. Mm -hmm. they're, they're out there, 90% of us, maybe more. Uh, the biggest asset we possess beside our home is our IRA. Yeah, IRA. Now the IRA might have been a 401k, might have been a 457, might have been the drop, might have been a TSP, but when you move it from that custodian to where you control it, it becomes an IRA. And here's the thing people forget. What does the I stand for? Individual. Individual. So only one person can own it. Mm -hmm. Now. IRAs become very important when you want to pass it to someone. You cannot give your IRA to someone. You see, because it's an individual thing. It only belongs to me. So when people go through divorce, and unfortunately, what we term gray divorce has become the highest growing rate of divorce in the United States. Um, and I know that because I'm dealing with it with mm, clients quite consistently. Frequently, yeah. So I had someone come in this week and he said to me, you know, my wife and I are separating and I want to keep this IRA, but I want to give her that one. Uh -huh. I said, I can't do that. He said, well, yeah, you can. I'm giving you my permission. <laughs> I said, no, 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 you don't understand. You've got to get an attorney involved and we've got to do what's called a quadro, mm -hmm. which is an order from the court that allows me then to take this IRA from one person's name, put it into the other person's name without generating all of the tax consequences. Oh, there you, you go. See? Right. So without that, if I would have just taken his and said, okay, now it's yours, she would have had to pay taxes on every penny. Whoa, it's a lucky thing that uh, you're the advisor who knows what to do. Well, and he was ready to just sign it over mm -hmm. to her. So I'm, I'm so grateful he came in before he did anything because yes. that would have been such an unbelievable, unbelievable mess. Mm. Um, then, then the other problem we have with IRAs is how do you leave them? How do you, do you, who's the beneficiary going to be? Right, and I know we left off last month saying we'd come back and uh, talk about... Uh, Trusts, yes. IRA and trusts. Yes, yes, and it, it, that that's a very important thing. And you know, I brought with me one of my small manuals from Ed Slot. Uh, this is one of many. Joan can tell you I have a stack of these almost as tall as I am in the office from all the years I've been studying <laughs> with know. him. And every year I get two of these when I go to his class. Not one, I get two. Um, but, it, but we go more and more and more in depth into the rules of qualified money. So people will come in and, you know, they'll, they'll have a trust. And even Ed Slot says right here, if the trust is appropriate, 
if the trust is appropriate. And again, he goes on to say, trust are not needed by everyone, okay? So if you need a trust and you have a trust, you cannot, well, you can, but you'll really mess things up. If you just say the trust is the beneficiary, you have just created an unbelievable tax nightmare and you have just cheated the youngest of the heirs tremendously out of money that they could have if they stretched that IRA across years. So explain to us why that would not be a good thing. Well, because you see, a trust is not a person, is it? No, no, no it's, it's a, a trust does not have a it's life just like expectancy. It's a container, isn't it? Yeah, it's a container, okay? It doesn't have a life expectancy. It's just like a corporation. A corporation doesn't have a life expectancy. It is there until it is dissolved. Uh -huh. okay. And who knows when that's gonna be. Right. So if, if I live to be 110, which at the rate I'm going, I might do, um, you know, I live to 100, and I'll probably work till I'm 109. <laughs> um, you know, if, if, if I live that long, that is my life expectancy so my trust will be around that many years now the purpose of a trust is to remain after I'm gone to fulfill the wishes that I have so if my trust involves let's say people who when I pass away are 20 that trust could last another 80 90 years mm -hmm. but who knows yes it could right. be dissolved prior to mm -hmm. okay so there's no life expectancy on a trust okay, okay so that's right. that's that a very sense. important thing to okay. understand Good. so if i leave money just to the trust and i don't go the next step if i don't work with a very sophisticated good attorney who understands and i'm going to go a bit more into what to do that dumps into the trust it now is paid out through the trust because there's no trust life expectancy at the trust tax rate. Oh, well, there you go. Okay. Okay. Right. Now, to sense. give you an idea, the trust tax rate, anything over $12,500 this year is taxed at the 37% tax rate. Let that sink in. And when we come back from break, I'm going to explain how you avoid that. We'll be right back. Retirement strategies come in all shapes and sizes. One strategy does not fit all when it comes to reaching your retirement goals, and considering all your options may be, well, more than you want to think about. So whether you're looking to retire or already living in retirement, you need a strategy tailor-made for you. Hi, I'm Annalee Leonard with Mainstay Financial Group, and I'm here to design a financial plan for you and for those that you love. Hart, what's going on? I'm leaving. Why? What did I do? Not enough. You constantly ignore me. You barely eat anything healthy. You're half as active as you used to be. The pressure is just too much. I quit. OK, I get it. I'll do better. Just please, don't leave. OK. But remember, if I go, you go. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Mainstay Financial Group offers advocacy and personal financial guidance in a caring environment that's the heart of our practice. At Mainstay, we're dedicated to exemplary service and a caring relationship with our client, not with a number. Plan for the future now with Mainstay Financial Services. Welcome back to Winning with Anna Lee. I'm your host, Anna Lee Leonard, president of Mainstay Financial Group, right on the corner of Cervantes and Perry. And with me today is Dr. Joan Connell, my business partner. And I guess I should say with us today is Ed Slot because we're using all of Ed Slot's material. See, Ed Slot Elite IRA Advisors Group. This is where I get all this information from. And this is why I go 
every year That's right. and sit with him and literally allow him to fry my brain uh, so that I can come back with all this wonderful information that I'm able to refer back to constantly. And if I can't find it, I just pick up the phone and call their office. That's right. And they walk me through everything, which is great. Um, so, so we were talking about the trust and, and how the trust, leaving just this leaving this to the trust can really mess things up tax-wise. Now, the other problem it does, if, if you just leave this money without some type of instruction, ooh, and you get a 20-year-old that all of a sudden gets $80,000, $100,000, $200,000, that could be dangerous unless it's a very sophisticated, very grown-up, educated, financially educated person who understands the fact of reinvesting that and letting it have the power of time and compounding so that they then have a very nice nest egg when they retire. Unfortunately, a lot of inheritances are spent within three to six months. And you figure how long it took you to put that together. So ideally, the IRA should be left in a fashion where it can stretch across the lifetime of the person who inherits. Now, we're not talking spouse, okay? Because remember last month, we talked about how a spouse can own. They can own the IRA. They can actually own the IRA. The inheritor does not, okay? So the person who inherits has to every year take a required minimum distribution based on their age, not yours. So if you're 80 when you pass away, and you leave some of that money for a 10-year-old grandchild, think of how long that child can spread that money, and you don't have to leave them a lot for it to turn into a huge amount of money. Because they only have to take a little tiny bit. They only have to take a little bit. Remember when I talk about the IRA tables? Well, you know, I I talk in my class about one that is strictly for those of us who have reached the required minimum distribution Mm -hmm. age. There are two more tables. Oh, wow. Yeah, there's one if you have a spouse 10 years younger than you, and there's an entire other table that's if you inherit an IRA. (coughs) So, for instance, let's say you leave an IRA and you have two beneficiaries and one is 55 and one is 10, okay? So you leave them each $200, 200,000, okay? Now, the person who's 55, their factor according to the inherited IRA table is 29.6. So I take 200,000, I divide it by 29.6, they have to take out $6,756. Okay. Okay, they gotta pay taxes on that, they can spend the rest, they can invest it, do whatever they want. Now the 10 year old, the factor on a 10 year old when they inherit is 72.8. So I take 72.8, divide that into 200,000, that person only has to take out $2,747. Now. Just just follow me on this and think about the immensity that this could create. So they get $2,747. They've got to pay taxes based on that tax table of the 10-year-old. Right. Okay. They take that little bit out. And if I were you, I would do a letter of some type of instruction that says, all right, you can take $100 out, take the child to the baseball game or shopping or whatever it was you love to do with that child. So you make it meaningful, okay? The rest of the money is reinvested for the child's future. Now the child continues to do this through adulthood till they reach their retirement. Now they're getting, instead of 2,747, they're getting $30,000, $40,000 a year because that money has been growing all Because these it's years. been growing. Plus, they have the other pot that you made them reinvest, okay? Wow. Because what, what is it that's going away that we see consistently fewer and fewer and fewer places offer now? It's pensions. Right. So you have just built a pension for your grandchild. So if you leave it in a trust, you must work with an attorney and an advisor who understands how to set that up. Because the trust within it, and and this is the easiest way I can explain this. They're all kind of legal terms, but I'm gonna explain it the easiest way possible, okay? Think of it as a box 
that has dividers in it. Okay. You know how when you get a wine ship and it's got the little, <laughs> why did I think of that? Yeah, right. Okay, so it's got all the little dividers in it. So the trust would be like the box. Okay. But each divider is like a separate trust for each inheritor. Oh. Because you don't want the 10 year old to have to take money based on the 55 year old's age. Because you just cheated that kid out of a tremendous amount of money. Right. You see? So it, it's, it's, it's paperwork, it's working with people who understand this and know how to do it, and not just say, oh yeah, leave just the money to the, the trust. trust. Because if, if you do that, it, it, it's all gonna be distributed at the age of that oldest person, and if it's left to accumulate, it could be taxed at the trust rates instead of the individual's rates. So you don't want a box without dividers. You gotta have the dividers. You've gotta have them if you're gonna be tax efficient. Mm -hmm. Now, why would you even use the trust? Well, number one, if you want control, okay? Now, if, if you have a special needs child a or a grandchild, mm -hmm. you don't wanna leave them a sum of money because what you've just done is you've knocked them out of all their benefits. Right. Mm -hmm. yes. And you work very closely with those types <coughs> mm -hmm. things, so you know once you've been knocked out of things yeah. with the government, mm -hmm. yeah. very hard to get back in, okay? So you would position their money into the trust factor, okay? If you have a child who unfortunately, and it's more common now than it ever has been, if you have a child that has a substance abuse problem, you don't want to leave them a large sum of money because literally they will kill themselves with that money. Yes. So, so you don't want to do that. You, you want that money to be doled out, okay? Um, if you have a child or grandchild who is just not good with money, and let's face it, there are people out there yes, like there that. Yes, there it's, are. It's like there are holes in their hand. You see, they get the dollar and it goes straight through the other side. I mean, it, there is no stop gate mm -hmm, in there. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's just the money comes in, the money goes out. Well, you don't want to leave that person $200,000. And th this is the way I think about it. How long did it take you to save $200,000? Mm -hmm. How long did it take you to make that money? Probably not two or three months. <laughs> That's right. Not for the majority of us, okay? Mm -hmm. So it, how long did it take you to spend that, to make that money? You want that money given to somebody who will stretch it and use it mm -hmm. and use it Prudently, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. so so the trust is good in those situations. Now, if it, I work with one family that that both of their sons are doctors, well-educated men, understand value of a dollar. So what we've done is just sat down as a group and said, this is how the IRA is going to be left to you. This is how you can make the most exponential use of this money. Well, they both understand that. Mm -hmm. So there's no need to put that money through a trust for them. You, mm -hmm. you see where so I'm going? So they would be like beneficiaries. Yeah, they'll, they'll just be beneficiaries, but they know, especially in their tax brackets where they're gonna be by the time the parents pass away mm -hmm. as physicians, they know they don't wanna take more than they have to because it just ups the tax bracket. Because rem re re remember, required minimum distributions are counted as income. income for the year, so it takes the tax table and mm -hmm. raises it up. So you, you, you gotta watch those things, and I'm not saying you sit with your children and, and say, listen, this is exactly how much money I've got. <clears throat> That's not the, the meaning. The concept, the concept. You are going to receive some money. This is the best way that you can treat it. This is how it will help you the most and possibly your children. Right. If you don't use it all, guess what? It's gotta go on again, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing is the second time it goes on, it continues to be distributed at the age of the person who died, not the next heir. They, they won't let you stretch this ad infinitum. Yeah. Yeah. It okay. is the government we're dealing with, okay? <laughs> they want their taxes. They money. want their taxes. Right. And, and you know, I mean, you got a break when you went in, so they're like, okay, now enough. Um, so, so before you're talked into 
doing an, I, an IRA as a trust beneficiary, make sure you understand those rules. Come in and talk to me before you do that. Um, and if necessary, we'll get one of the Ed Slot people on the phone uh, because that's where I get all my information from and the attorneys that he works with very, very closely. So I want you to be careful. And we do have a couple of very good attorneys in this city who understand this concept mm -hmm. that we work very closely with at Mainstay. So something that you want to be able to do. So, you know, I mean, could I go on? Five more, five more weeks, but we can't. Um, you got Ellie, questions you know, coming. Our, our viewers, I'm sure they're, they're they're thinking. I wish you would get excited about these I know. things. I know. I'm I'm sorry. I I sorry. I'm so boring. <laughs> um, listen, got a good thing for you coming up next month. Oh, we're gonna have so much fun next month. We have Bob Drury and Brooks coming from. Alpha Star, uh, who is my registered investment advisor, they hold my license. They're going to be with me, uh, for actually for two shows mm -hmm. for next month and the month after. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about being in the market. We're going to talk about stop loss programs. We're going to talk about combining different strategies to balance a portfolio. Um, this is something I really get excited about <laughs> uh, because you, you know it's it, it, you got to think about it. Boy, the market it, it, it's doing great in December, great in January. Then we had that drop, and then June we had a drop, and right now we're going gangbusters. But you know what? It's not going to last forever. So what do you do? to build in some stop mm -hmm. gates in there. And we're gonna talk about that next month and the month after. So that's that's gonna be a fun show too. Yeah, it will be. Yeah. <clears throat> really so if we can help that. you, you wanna register for Fran's class and sound the sound bath, the sound healing, call us 437-3127. Would love to have the chance to help you. We'll see you next month. Take care, bye-bye.